rich at that. It's not dinging quite as much as it usually is. What's the deal? Ah, there we go. Welcome to Rotary. My political hot minute, I guess, uh, is uh, as much as you guys know, spending some time up the legislature while it's still in session for the League of Cities and Towns. Yesterday interviewed uh, two more candidates for governor, uh, Ambassador and former Governor Huntsman uh, for a few minutes, and then uh, Lieutenant Governor Cox uh, for a few minutes. So I'll share those videos when I, when I get them of the questions we asked, but both spoke uh, both are politicians, so they knew their audience who they were speaking to. They spoke very highly of Spanish Fork. So um, <laughs> obviously, yeah, they should. They should. They both have some, some uh, relative uh, roots here and, uh, and history here. Um, but, uh, but yeah, nothing but uh, good, things, good things about Spanish Fork. And I always mention that it's because we have good people like, like all of you. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he let me know that I think it does set him apart if he hits this goal, uh, and I think he will, but we have 249 cities and towns across the city of Utah, one, one new one this year, and it's escaping me what that is, but 249 cities and towns across the state of Utah. He's visited 220 in, in kind of a tour of, uh, of all cities and towns of all shapes and sizes, right, across the, the whole state. And, uh, and he's got uh, about, uh, about 40 more to go that they're going to try to hit in the, in the next two weeks. So pretty impressive that he's been all over the place. Yeah, I'm sure that will be part of a campaign push here uh, coming up uh, close to caucus uh, uh, that's in the first part of March. So if you don't remember, put it on your calendar. I'm not sure of the dates. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I think, I think six. So uh, Thomas Wright um, and Rob Bishop, if you've seen the Wright Bishop signs, Thomas Wright, Rob Bishop is a current um, congressman in, 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 uh, back in DC for us, but he's, his term's expiring. So he's running as Lieutenant Governor with Thomas Wright. Uh, Amy Winder Newton is a current council member uh, in Salt Lake County. Uh, was a Taylorsville City Council member before that, but she serves right now as a council member in, in Salt Lake County. Uh, Greg Hughes uh, was the Speaker of the House two years ago, so he served in the legislature. Uh, and then um, uh, Spencer Cox, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor Cox, uh, John Huntsman, former Governor John Huntsman. And then tomorrow is my last interview, and that's Jeff Burningham, a business owner from uh, Provo lives over in Provo. Oh. So, but you will notice, I, 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 he's, uh, if you've seen any of his commercials, uh, Rotary, fellow Rotary member, and what is uh, Jake uh, Harward for? It, something assistant to the district governor or something? Yep. So I gave him a hard time because he's in the campaign commercial for Jeff Burningham. Oh. <laughs> yeah, said, hey, is this an endorsement? But uh, good guy. And, and, All but Jeff Burningham. And no, Aaron, you're not going to commit me to. Uh, yeah. I'm not committing you who, but I'm just wondering if you have identified a clear leader in your own mind. All very impressive and impressive resumes, I think, for, for uh, political leadership in our state. I, I like people that have experience in private sector and, and, and public sector, and everyone I've talked to has had some level of that so far. So I would say we have a great opportunity that honestly don't think we can go too wrong in picking our next governor, but we have a great field running for governor. So um, maybe on camera you March third. March third. Okay. So March third for both parties, Democrat and Republican, uh, is uh, coming coming up in a week. Um, and uh, so make sure that you know where you're going. You should have a ballot mailed to you already for uh, the, the Republican side of, uh, of presidential campaign. Check your mail if you haven't got that. But uh, yep, the political silly season is about to be upon us. So have fun, yep.
And now we'll listen from <coughs> Lana. She's got I'll, something. I'll listen, okay. If that's okay. All right. Um, so I don't know if you guys remember the Dragon's Pantry when we took those clothing items and stuff over there, and they had those meal meal packet things mm -hmm. for the families where you put them together. Well, Triple T is actually going to do that, and so we're collecting food items. And then next Wednesday, we're going to be putting them together in the bags. Very simple. They're more like family meals for the whole family. Easy to make spaghetti, chili, that kind of thing. So if you're interested in contributing money or food or coming next week to um, put, the, put all the food in the bags, we'd like to stay at what time? At 9 o'clock, at 9.30 at the shop at Triple T. I assume I am. Yeah, they're 9.30 in the a.m. I'm in bed by And it's just really basic stuff like canned chicken, um, cream of mushroom soup, those kind of things. So, anyway, thanks. Perfect. Thanks, Lana. Okay, Brad, you're up. Tell us everything there is to know about the uh, best golf tournament, one of the best golf tournaments in uh, South Utah County. I'll do my introduction as well, how's that? Um, so my name is Brad Lang, I'm with America First Credit Union. Uh, I've been with them for 18 years now. Um, resident of Spanish Fork City for 16 of those years, so uh, it's been a, a great opportunity for me to have career advancements within America First, but you know, when, when my wife and I got married. We chose to move to Spanish Fork and to uh, purchase a home here and, and be residents. So I don't foresee us leaving anytime soon, but um, uh, a great community. I, I, you know, I, I really do appreciate the, the community that we have and the um, growth that we're experiencing. Uh, I know some residents probably struggle with that and like the small, small town part of it, but um, it's nice to have some of the conveniences. So um, today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the Rotary and Chamber Golf Tournament and give you a little bit of a background on the, the event itself. Um, this year marks our 28th year and so I, I know we've got quite a few Rotarians that have just joined in the last little bit and so sometimes as I started thinking about when I joined the Rotary about 14 years ago, it's probably 13 years ago, um, sometimes it's getting an understanding of what we are doing and why we're doing it and how it's affecting our community. Um, and one of the easiest events that we're involved in is really the golf tournament. Um, its impact that, that it has um, reaches out to the schools that are around and, and has really contributed to a lot of opportunity for graduating seniors. So a um, couple things I wanted to recognize. So where it's in its 28th year, this tournament originated with Clark Swenson and Andy Shalise. Did I said that? Shalise? Shalise? Um, 20, 28 years ago, so Shalise. Um, and so, you know, they're, they're kind of the forefront um, uh, of the event and, and really created the opportunity um, you know, years ago, set the, the groundwork. So um, it's gone through a few changes over the years. Um, about eight years ago, nine years ago, um, uh, Aaron Brown was the golf pro over at Spanish Oaks, and now Ryan uh, Reese came in. And uh, in talking with Ryan and some of the way that the tournament was set up, um, it was determined at that time Ryan wanted to change the dates of his tournament. So um, our golf tournament has always uh, coincided with the Spanish Fork Open, uh, which is a, a great event that brings golfers throughout the state to Spanish Fork area to compete for uh, a two-day tournament. So uh, in talking with Ryan, um, it, it only made sense to to uh, make a few adjustments that way in terms of what he, his expectations were. So. Um, one of those changes that we did experience um, within the first year um, was some of the challenge at, at, 
uh, originally the golf tournament was the Spanish Fork uh, Rotary and Chambers uh, Celebrity Pro-Am. And so as we talked with Ryan and some of the challenges that we had in getting some of the celebrities in and some of the pros being out of their, um, out of their uh, golf courses um, for multiple days, it became pretty evident that we probably should drop the pro-am part of it and, and just expand it more and, and focus more as, as the scholarship golf tournament. So we rebranded re it, rena renamed it about six, six to seven years ago. Um, in doing that and, and so we've really just focused on creating it to where it's really branded for the intent is, which is to give uh, graduating seniors um, some scholarship. So I want to tri uh, thank Tracy for providing some information. So um, Tracy had some stats going back to 1997 um, with the, the tournament and so a few of the things that I think is really quite remarkable for our event is um, in looking through the recipients of the scholarships, we have awarded 363 scholarships over since 1997. So there's five years that, that are not accounted for that was prior to Tracy's time, I'm assuming. Um, and so you think of the impact that that has had on, on that number of, of individuals. So, one of the things I wanted to do is kind of go through the list and see who were um, still within the community. And so um, I don't know a lot of them, but I, I just wanted to pose the question within this group is, you know, if you've had a family or a relative um, who has received the scholarship award, raise your hand. So four or five of us. So. Um, so one of the things that I, I think is pretty remarkable is that you know, these, these scholarships are really going towards um, improving the education. Um, this year marks another um, uh, achievement for the event. I think um, with a good event, we'll actually surpass a half a million dollars raised, which is pretty remarkable. So we're, really, we're right on the cusp that way. So we have some work to do um, to be able to continue to push it. But. Um, so as far as from my experience with the event, um, I think I started helping just mainly with Lana Dahl when she was chairing the event and, and somehow got roped into it to a greater extent. So um, when, when initially I was asked to chair it a few years back um, with Sierra Sorensen, a few of the things that we had to, to think through and um, kind of come up with some envision of what, what, what do we want the event to look like? How do we want it to impact um, going forward? And, and what are some ways that we can improve sponsorship? Um, the first year that we took it over, I think we had 22 sponsors um, at that, that time. So um, a few of the things that we talked with and we went out in the community and, and one of the, the fortunate things that happened at that same time was Doug Smith came in and they bought out um, Barber Brothers. Barber Brothers was always a, a contributor, but Doug Smith has jumped right in and, and in each year that we've asked them, they've provided a hole in one prize for the event. So we have some excitement on the course with, with the golfers that they have the opportunity to um, hit, the ball, hit the ball on a par three and be able to get a Pull in one, and if they do, they win a car. Um, the other thing that we introduced as well was some additional excitement for another um, par three is to have the rotary and chamber combined um, and have a $10,000 um, cash prize for a hole in one. And so now um, we're a little unique in that most golf tournaments that are out there, they don't have the two hole in one prizes. So. Um, we haven't had a winner. Um, it's insured, so if, if somebody gets it, all the better, right? Um, I have played in an event uh, last year up in Heber where a person won a, a Chevy Colorado. And it, it makes a lot of buzz throughout. You can hear it uh, throughout. So I'd really love to see somebody get it. Well, there was that lady just um, the other day at a basketball game that made like a 100-foot putt across mm -hmm. the court and got 
Something like that. She's 84 years old and she made a putt across the basketball court. Yep. Yeah, it's crazy. And the kid at BYU, at the BYU Gonzaga, made a half court shot for 8,000. So it happens. We, it's only a matter of time. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll try and move the tees up to hopefully get some opportunity. Um, a few of the other things that we envisioned is, is how, do we, how do we reach out and get people excited about participating and sponsoring in our event. And so one of the things that we really strive to do is to reach out to um, any businesses within the community. Um, I constantly get the response, I don't golf, I don't know about golf, how can I help? Um, and really the response is, is if you're a business where you want to have uh, an opportunity to market your business out, out within this group of, of people. One of the things that I always joke around about with, um, with, with some of my networking and, and within um, some of my managers that I work with is I say, I love to golf because I know golfers, one, they, they tend to um, drive nice vehicles and they tend to have certain things that they like to do. So it's a good network for me because I can, I can network and help with my job in that. But, um, so, so as it pertains to a business that, that's really out there that wants to put their name out there, we have whole sponsorships. We're always looking for uh, swag items. So a, a golfer bag, they come through, they get registered, they, they can receive certain items then, and a business can donate those. Um, as well as you know, with the whole sponsorship, providing a prize um, to the golfer. So it's a good opportunity to market the different businesses. Um, so a couple of the, the businesses that have always been on board with that, uh, like say it was Doug Smith, um, Chick-fil-A, since they've come in, they've been a, a good uh, appreciated contributor to you know, those whole sponsorships and many others. So, um, so kind of thinking through um, the history of, of the event and, and everything. So, um, the exciting part of, of the scholarships is that it continues to expand. The Spanish Fork community continues to grow. Um, I'm sure when the event um, initially kicked off, it was part of the Spanish Fork High School. We awarded Spanish Fork High School. Um, the nice thing about this event, so uh, whether a business is in Salem, Spanish Fork, you know, they may be over in Mapleton, but um, a few of the things that that uh, makes it important is that it goes towards, you know, the kids that are in our area. It'll go towards Spanish Fork High School graduating seniors, Maple Mountain, Landmark, and then Salem Hills. Um, with the scholarships, um, the dollar amounts have changed over time. Oh, I recall that we've even done some Payson students in the past as well. I think we've had. If they attended Landmark, yeah. No, like I went to Payson High School and presented. Payson, we've tended to leave up to the Qantas, Qantas yeah, group, Qantas. Um, and so I knew I know they raised some funds for their with their event. Hey, I've got a question. So, sure. I know ALA has not been able to be involved because of the, the foundation. When we get our own 501 c three, can we include them? What does it look like? So that's that's a good thought, um, and definitely could be an inclusion. So, um, um, so a couple of years in addition, what we've done. So the dollar amount um, over time has changed. You know, tuition for school continues to go higher, and so um, as we met a few years ago, we decided that we really want to have this scholarship be as close to a half tuition scholarship as we can can get, right? And so, um, and talking with Tracy, we upped that dollar amount um, to $1,500, which makes a difference for it. And we helped, you know, with some other uh, lim limiting factors that makes it to where those individuals can receive uh, the scholarship a little bit easier. Um, it doesn't have to be, the scholarship doesn't have to go towards, um, like one of the university, it can go towards trade type school as well. And we have a good partnership with 
um, M Tech now, um, and so they've they've helped in years past at providing their own scholarship and providing that to to some of the, the graduating seniors. So we've had we've had schools we had um, a design school in Denver. I think we've had one in Florida. All of the all of the state <coughs> colleges. We had one to Harvard or not, but we've had they've been all across all around. That's pretty exciting. Um, so, kind of breaking it into, um, you know, what are we going to do this year? So, Bill Summers is going to be the the chair for the event this year. I thank him for taking that on. Uh, but in talking, so um, my role is going to be similar to helping Bill. So I'll help with all of the day of the event type stuff and golf. Uh, course organization to help sh make sure that everything is seamless for Tyler and Ryan up at the golf course. Um, I've asked Tyler uh, Mendenhall, or we've met, asked Tyler Mendenhall to um, be the representative from the Rotary Group for to be over sponsorships and to help coordinate those. So sponsorships can be, you know, a golfer sponsorship. It can be hole sponsorship, swag sponsorship. Um, drawing donations, those types of things. And then Nicole Hammond with Serve Pro has agreed or, or is here from the chamber and she's going to represent the chamber um, with the sponsorships and, and everything as well. So, um, so they might be reaching out to us for help or they're not going yes. to do it all by themselves, yep. are they? Well, yeah. <laughs> the, the other thing Nicole has agreed to to take on as well as some social media, which is the aspect that we've really not, we haven't done a lot with that. So um, she's going to work with some social media and do some social media for us to help promote the event and and hopefully get, reach individuals that we probably have missed as of yet. So um, I wanted to give Bill some time to speak a little bit. I, I reached out to him this morning and see if he wants to um, add a little bit to what I've already talked about and give us some direction on this year. Uh, we'll, we'll get with you as we're going through. Okay. But, uh, yeah. If anybody that was assigned stuff when we talked uh, a couple weeks ago, please make sure that you're reaching out to those people that you're supposed to be talking to. And, and uh, it's only, what, six weeks away, so. There, there are um, there are a lot of new businesses that we can reach out to. Um, I think I think a lot of it just has to do like if if you're in the business, um, you know, one of the businesses, and and you want to approach them, you know, you may be there shopping. Uh, I find that that's a, a good good time as any. Um, so, one thing I didn't talk about is is the scholarship. So. Um, I'm assuming Lana Hiskey's always been um, the, at the forefront of organizing and developing as a representative from the district Are with the scholarships. Many, we've got the applications out to the schools for mm -hmm. in the counseling departments. A lot of the schools will have that posted online under counseling. So if parents are listening, have them get um, nudge their students a little bit to apply, and the application deadline for the scholarships this year is. So April 16th is the deadline for applications, and it's on the counselors. Okay. Tournament will be on May 6th. And so um, for those individuals who, you know, they may not want to be, you know, involved necessarily with the day of the event, but would like to judge the, the applicants and be a part of the choosing the applicant award, 
Um, you know, typically land and Hiskey will oversee that, so we typically are looking for six to seven to eight individuals to, to go through and judge those. Um, one of the reasons that I got involved with it years ago was, you know, seeing that opportunity, I got to be part of the judging part. I've chosen not to for the last couple of years. It's, it's tough. Um, it's a tough aspect to do, but, um, you know, uh, kind of my vision, and, and we've gone through different ranges of, you know, what do we look th for for qualifications of a, a student? Um, and so I think that's the, the benefit that we gain from having, you know, seven or eight people judge and, and, and look to really give these scholarships to deserving students who show um, community service or things that represent the Rotary well. Because um, this is a scholarship that's coming from the Rotary and so it should be something that envisions the, the core values or the four-way test of the, the Rotary Club. Um, you know, these, these individuals have exhibited leadership within their community and, 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 and uh, that can, can go, go out into the community and, and represent really well. So. Some of the names from 20, 25 years ago? I've wondered this. So, one of the things as I was looking through them, like, what if we reached out to some of these recipients from years and years ago? And, and just to see, because I, I, one of the things I asked you was, you know, how many are part of the community? So, um, so I will say uh, it's kind of interesting to look at the number of scholarships that we awarded. So, um, we did 20 scholarships last year, 23 the year before. So um, we, we are expanding our capacity of being able to award a little bit higher. But so the, the first year that, that's on here was Karen uh, Morrell. Karen Morrell. 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 It says yeah. Morrell, but anyway. Um, let's see, that's pretty small font. Um, um, Arian Badsgard. Arian Badsgard. Uh, Chris Mikesell, um, Natalie Harwood, Rachel McVeigh, Tony Johns, uh, Ashley Roach, Megan Hughes, Melissa Clayton, Michael Taylor, Rebecca Sackett, Trisha Johnson, Tyler Nilsson, um, Jeff Yowd, uh, Christy Collette, um, Nicholas Sidman, so that's that's four years worth. So it's kind of interesting to look back, but originally this was done on needs, and Richard Taylor was a big part of it, mm -hmm. and it was he was really hoping to get more kids who are interested in the trades. But one of the things about it was that a lot of the kids who didn't have the money to go to college, this would get them in the door, mm -hmm. and then they found other besides working other avenues to get other scholarships. And so some of them, when they found that out, and there was one gal I was able to keep track of, and she graduated and became, became a school teacher, and when she started, she had the village. Mm -hmm. And she had, had to work really hard, but she did it. She said, without the Rotary Scholarship, get her in the door, yep. you know, and yep. talk to her and said, go to the counseling office, find out what you can. Yeah. And that's what we, the kids who don't have the scholarships in addition to ours, yep. that's what they need to know is it's a way to get them in the door and find out what the other stuff is. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things that drew me in as well. I was, I was that student. I didn't have the 4.0 grade average, uh, but I knew I wanted to go to school and I didn't have high enough ACT score to, to get all the scholarships that were out there. And so, um, I didn't, didn't go to Spanish Fork High School or anything, but um, the high school that I went to had a similar one. It was ended up being about a half tuition scholarship that I got, and that pushed me into the door and got me really on my way. And so um, that's really what I envision for, for this tournament as well, is to have that opportunity. Just to back you up, you know, I taught marketing and entrepreneurship and business law and, and business management in high school. And you, the real, a lot of the most successful students I had were definitely not 4.0, but they were go-getters and they had energy and they wanted to make a difference and wanted to be successful and they were creative. So. Yep.
So those, those are the ones that we like to apply, and, and we'd like to find those and, and try and to award, award that scholarship to them. So, okay, that's all I have. So any other questions? Thank you, Brad. Thank you. Wrap it up for us, Brad. You want me to ring the bell? <laughs> yeah. So those of you who weren't at the BYU basketball game on Thursday night, Lana's daughter was a star. Oh, yes, she was. She showed us.